Good day, my name is Tian Gildenhuis and on this video I would like to discuss the centuries old, very controversial subject of the believer's baptism versus infant or baby baptism. And this is one of the doctrines that has caused division among families, among churches throughout the ages. But today we will just read what the Word of God says about this very important subject. But we can only do, do this under the leading of the Holy Spirit. And because it is all about our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray together first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that the Bible says we two or three are gathered in my name. I am in their midst. So Lord, we know you're here. We were busy with the production of this video. But you will also be there where people will be watching this video, wherever they may be. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will take me out of the way that your Holy Spirit will speak through me and that your Holy Spirit will reveal the truth of the Word of God to us. And Father, that all of us will be willing to hear what the Word of God says. And thank you that you give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. You will not steal the message from the ears of the children of God and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood, that you will set up your angels all around us, and that you yourself will be a wall of fire round about us, according to Zechariah 2 verse 5, so that you alone will be glorified in what we are doing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now through your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, on this video, we're going to discuss the following six points. Number one, the baptism as a shadow or a type or a pattern. Number two, did infant baptism replace circumcision? Number three, what is Jesus' own instruction to us? Number four, what must we do? Number five, what is the true origin of infant baptism? And number six, did Jesus practice what he preached? And I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13 in the King James Version of the Bible that says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And today we will read what the Bible says regarding baptism, and you will see for yourself that you can acknowledge, in other words, that you can understand what it says just as it is written. And the Bible says, I trust ye shall acknowledge it even to the end. Because Jesus warned us in Matthew 22 verse 29 where he said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Yes, we are the ones making mistakes. We are the ones erring. We are the ones being deceived because we do not know our scriptures. And why do we not know our scriptures? Because we do not know the author of the scriptures. We are not in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is why we err, not knowing the scriptures. Because if we know our scriptures, because we know the author of the scriptures, then we will also get to know the power of God. This is what happened to me. Only when I met the Lord Jesus Christ personally, a number of years ago, only then did His Holy Spirit reveal His scriptures to me and did I get to know the power of God in my personal life. But I first had to get to know the author of the scriptures on an intimate, personal basis. And then I started to read his scriptures and then he started to teach me his power, his power in my personal life. Because the verse that is applicable to most all of us when we do not know these things is Hosea 4 verse 6 that says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And I always say to the people, look at the first two words there. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It does not say the sinners or the unbelievers or whatever. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what? Lack of knowledge of what the Word of God teaches us. We do not have knowledge about the Word. Why? Because we have been so busy with dead religion. We never got to know the author of the Scriptures. And I tell you today, my brother and my sister, religion is dead. Relationship with Jesus Christ is life. Only when I got to know Jesus Christ personally in my life, did His Holy Spirit reveal the Scriptures to me, did I get to have a hunger for His Word. And when I started to study His Word for myself, only then did I get to know all these things and did I start to do what the Bible says. Because the warning in that verse is, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you that you will be no priest to me. 
And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. And today we will see how applicable that verse is, even in this whole controversial matter of the believers' baptism versus baby baptism or infant baptism. Is it in many instances that God is forgetting our children because we are forgetting the law of our God? We are rejecting the commands of our God? We will see what the Bible says about this. At number one, let us now look at the baptism as a shadow or a type or a pattern in the Bible. And we read in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1 to 4 that Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That is the shadow or the pattern. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And that is the fulfillment, because we must understand, Moses is also a type of Christ. He is a type of the Savior, because he was the Savior that took them out of Egypt, taking them on the road to the promised land. And so we see in the word that Moses is seen as a type of Jesus, who is our Savior, who takes us out of the land of sin, out of sin and darkness, and who takes us into the promised land. So that is the type, the shadow or the pattern, that those people of Israel were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And the fulfillment that we will see today is that when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we will also be baptized into Jesus because they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ and that was the fulfillment. And that is why we know in the New Testament times that we live in, we also have to be baptized into our Savior, into Christ, as we will see what the Bible teaches us, what we must do. There are certain things that we must do. God has given us a free will. He is not a puppet master. He did not make us puppets. He wants us to choose with our own free will. And we will see what the Bible says about this. At number two, let us now discuss the question, did infant baptism replace circumcision, as some people say? We read in Luke 2 verse 21, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. In other words, at his circumcision, the child Jesus was given his name. So Jesus was circumcised, yet we read in Matthew 3 verse 13 to 15, Then cometh Jesus as a thirty-year-old man from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer, that means allow it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And so you must also have a look at the YouTube video that I have on what is righteousness all about then you will understand there is a specific meaning to this word righteousness. And Jesus said we must fulfill righteousness by him being baptized. So if Jesus was circumcised and also baptized as an adult, and I was baptized as a baby, okay, then I might say that my uh, infant baptism replaced the circumcision of Jesus. But what of mine replaced his adult baptism. There is something missing here. We see that the word baptize in Greek, baptizo, is to make whelmed. That is fully wet. Used only in the New Testament of ceremonial ablution, especially technically of the ordinance of Christian baptism. Baptist, baptize and wash. And I ask you the question today. When you were baptized, because I tell you today, a baby is not baptized, because a baby is not made fully wet at his 
baptism, at his infant baptism. So if you are not made fully wet yet, then you've not been baptizoed. Then you've not been baptized yet. So the enemy is lying to us and he's trying to divide Christians on such an important topic as this one regarding the believers' baptism. So the word baptizo means to make fully wet. We also hear the argument in some churches it is said that infant baptism replaced circumcision. This is found nowhere in the Bible. You will not show me one verse in the Bible that says infant baptism replaced circumcision. This is only found in some church traditions or church documents. And we read what Jesus said about church traditions in Mark 7 verse 6 to 13. He answered and he said unto them, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain, look at this now, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered. And you can read that part there. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the scribes about their traditions of washing their hands before eating in a specific way, etc., etc. But still, the word there is tradition. And there are many church traditions throughout the church ages that we find ourselves in over centuries that have become more important to people than the Word of God. We must understand that the Word of God is more important than any church tradition because when you die, my brother and my sister, you will not stand before God with your church books in your hands. When you die and you stand before the Lord, I believe this book will be there. And God is going to ask you, my child, what did you do with this book of mine? And then you won't be able to say, Lord, but my church said this tradition is more important or that tradition is more important. And God is going to say, no, my child, what did my word say? Why were you not obedient to my word? And what are you going to tell the Lord? And again, as I said, Jesus was circumcised and he was baptized as an adult. I myself grew up in a traditional church in South Africa and I had an infant baptism when I was a young baby. So if my infant baptism replaced his circumcision, what of mine replaced his adult baptism. So there's a hole in my walk of faith there if I want to follow Jesus. I always say to people when we were young, we played this game, follow the leader. So one child would run ahead and then the others would follow him. And if he ran around the rose bush, they would run around the rose bush. And if he jumped over a stream, they would jump over the stream or whatever the case may be. So now Jesus comes. He's our leader. And he walks in front. So we walk after him. And then he goes through the water. He's baptized, baptizo, made fully wet as an adult. And we who say we follow the leader, we walk around the water. We're not willing to be made fully wet because we've been deceived by a doctrine that Satan used for many ages to cause division in Christian homes, to have people killed as we will see. And this is definitely not from God. At number three, let us look at the question, what is Jesus' own instruction to us as his followers, as New Testament disciples? We read that in Matthew 28 verse 19 where he says, Go ye therefore and teach. The word there in the Greek is matateo. It means disciple all nations. So it is actually saying there, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. And all nations obviously includes the circumcised Jews. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So Jesus' instruction to us is, go make disciples of all nations, including the circumcised Jews, and after you've made them disciples, what is the first thing you must do with them then? You must baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
And then you must teach them to observe all things whatsoever Jesus has commanded us. And what has he commanded us? Go make disciples of all nations and baptize them. This is one of the things that you must teach them. And immediately people say, no, no, hang on. That verse, Matthew 28 verse 19, was not part of the original text. It was inserted many centuries later by either scribes making mistakes or by the Roman Catholic Church. I've got news for you. That verse was not inserted by anybody. It's been part of the original text from the beginning. I had the privilege with one of the tours that we took to Israel to buy this little book here. This little book that you see here is the Hebrew New Testament. And even in the Hebrew New Testament, that verse in Matthew 28 verse 19 is exactly the same as in the King James Version of the Bible and even in our Afrikaans Bibles that says, Go make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you to go and teach the people. So that verse was not inserted later. It is part of the original text. Ephesians 4 verse 4 to 6 says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And so many people say, you see, there's only one baptism. So if you were baptized as a baby, you have received that one baptism. No, you have not. That which you have received as a baby is not the baptism because that was not baptizo. That was not that you were made fully wet. And there are certain other things that you're supposed to do that goes along with your baptism, which a baby cannot do. Things like what we read in Mark 16 verse 16. Here Jesus says, who is Jesus? Jesus is God. And he says the following, he that number one believeth, a baby cannot believe. And number two is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So here we see that I must believe and then be baptized. A baby cannot believe and then be baptized. And so we see the warning in Luke 7 verse 29 and 30. Jesus is speaking to a multitude of people. And then they talk about John and all that. And then Jesus tells them certain things about John who came before him. And then the word says the following. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. Now that baptism of John is the believer's baptism where you baptize yourself and have yourself baptized as an adult to wash away your sins. But look at the rest. But the Pharisees and the lawyers, that is the learned theologians of that time, rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. Now you must decide. Which group do you belong to? Do you want to belong to the group that justifies God being baptized with the believers' baptism? Or do you want to be part of the group that rejects the counsel of God against yourself being not baptized as a believer? The decision is yours. And unfortunately, I've also received uh, testimonies when we were in Israel. Many people have been there once or twice or three or four or ten times that they have actually been part of groups where a reverend or a priest or some people of specific church denominations that do not believe in the believers' baptism, they do infant baptism, they take tour groups to Israel. And then the reverend himself has himself baptized in the River Jordan. Then he comes back home and still teaches the infant baptism. What are you doing, sir? Are you deceiving your own people now? having yourself baptized as a believer in the River Jordan as an adult believer, yet you come back and you still teach your people infant baptism, which is contradictory to the Word of God. Such people will have to answer to God regarding this matter. At number four, we must now look at what must we do? Luke 6 verse 46 says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. 
If there is one thing that I've learned the past 21 years since I met the Lord Jesus in 1999, is that the Bible is a book that must be done. It's not just a book that must be believed in. The moment that I do believe that it is the Word of God, I must start to do what it says, because this is one of the first warnings that Jesus showed me in the Word of God when I got saved, is why do you call me Lord, Lord in your church every Sunday, yet you go out from Monday to Saturday and you do not do the things which I say. So let's see what happened in the times of Acts. We read in Acts 8 verse 35 to 37 that Philip, you all know the story that God tells Philip to go into the desert where a eunuch who came from Ethiopia was on his wagon and uh, Philip had to go and teach him. And so the eunuch takes him onto the wagon. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Take note of those words. So if Philip preached unto the eunuch Jesus, what did he tell him about Jesus? Also including the fact that Jesus was baptized by John in the river Jordan. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me? to be baptized. So the question here is, if there is water, what blocks me from being baptized? Why can't I be baptized if there is water here? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And it's interesting to note that this red part here is Acts 8 verse 37. In many of the modern translations, that verse has been taken out. The verse that says, if you believe with your whole heart, you may be baptized. Nothing can hinder you. But that has been taken out in many new versions. But we read further in Acts 8 verse 38 and 39. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, baptized him, made him fully wet, immersed him into the water. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And so many people say, no, 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 no. You know, I've seen pictures in churches and in, in, in encyclopedias and stuff where, you know, Jesus stood in the river and then John took some water in his hand and he just sprinkled it over the head of Jesus. Or that Philip and the eunuch, also they went down into the water, yes, and then the eunuch stood there and Philip took some water in his hands and he sprinkled it on top of the eunuch. That is not true. If that was all that was necessary to be done, then of course that eunuch had water on his wagon. Then Philip could just have put his hand into the water jug or the water container on the wagon and sprinkled it on the head of the eunuch? No. They went down into the water so that Philip could baptize him, to take him down into the water, to submerge him into the water, that he can be immersed, totally washed, baptized, baptizo. Remember that word. It is not baptism to have a few drops of water sprinkled on your forehead, my brother and my sister. Thus, it is clear that you may have yourself baptized as an adult believer if you believe with your whole heart that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Then you may have yourself baptized the correct way by immersion, baptizo, in water. Don't let anybody stop you from that anymore. And it's also said that it's not something that we can do. Jesus already did it on our behalf. When we went through that water ritual as a baby, they say, yes, we got baptized there. No, 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 no. That's not true. We read in Acts 2 verse 36 and 37 uh, on the day of Pentecost that uh, Peter is now preaching to all the people there. And he says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And I really believe that when you watch this video and you have not yet been baptized as an adult believer, 
that the Holy Spirit will start to prick you in your heart regarding this message. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now look at what Peter says in Acts 2 verse 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Number one, repent. Brother and sister, a baby has nothing to repent of. And number two, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. A baby has no sins that must be remitted. And immediately people say, no, but they have the original sin. I will show you what the Bible says regarding that. There is no such thing that the baby is born with the original sin. A baby has no sins that must be remitted. And number three, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So very clear when these men ask Peter, what must we do now that we understand that Jesus has died for us, now that we receive this in our own hearts? Then Peter said, the first thing you must do is repent. Repent of your sins and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And on that day, they baptized about 3,000 people who got saved on that day, the Bible says. Another thing that we must understand regarding baptism, we find in Romans 6, verse 3 and 4, where we read, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death, just to refer you back to the first chapter where I discussed about the baptism being a shadow, where the people were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So we are being baptized into Jesus Christ. And if we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into His death. Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. My brother and my sister, the baptism is a burial. I bury the old sinful man or the sinful woman that sinned so much in the past by going to Jesus, receiving Him as my Lord and my King, becoming His disciple, I immediately then bury my old man or my old woman. I am buried with Him by baptism into death, so that I can stand up in a new life with Christ and walk with Him in newness of life. And I always ask the question, when is somebody buried? When he lies on top of the ground with a few rocks on his forehead? or when he is completely covered by the earth. So now you must ask yourself the question then, when is somebody baptized? When he receives a few drops of water on his forehead, or when he is completely covered by the water? Another confirmation we find in Colossians 2 verse 12, that says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So we are buried with Christ in baptism, and therefore we also rise with him through the faith of the operation of God. It does not say we are buried with him in our infant christening. It does not say we are buried with him in circumcision. No, we are buried with him in baptism, and then we are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And then we also see what happened to Paul in Acts 22, verse 12 to 16. Paul gives the testimony of what happened to him on the day that he went to Damascus. And he said, and he, that is Ananias, said to Paul, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, that is Jesus, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise, look at this now, arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Oh wow. So Paul, who was a very learned theologian, he was a Pharisee, he studied at the feet of Gamaliel, so he was a circumcised Jew, 
when he met the Lord Jesus personally, Ananias said to him, Paul, why are you tarrying now? God has chosen you to know his will. So now if you know his will, why are you tarrying? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins while you call on the Lord. So again, Paul was baptized. I, who grew up in a traditional church, I was baptized, but it was not a baptism. As a baby, I had my infant christening, whatever the case may be, what they called it. But then Paul, when he met the Lord Jesus personally, he arose and he went into the water to be baptized, to be baptized, to be made fully wet, to wash away his sins. And if I don't do that, there's something missing. There's something lacking in my walk of faith. Because if my baby baptism replaced the circumcision of Paul, what of mine replaced his adult baptism? Can you see that we've been deceived for very long? In Acts 18 verse 8 we read, And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord. A baby cannot believe. With all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So again we see here, in line with Mark 16 verse 16, where Jesus says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So Crispus and his household believed and they were baptized. The Corinthians believed and they were baptized. Many people and many churches believing in infant baptism or baby baptism try to use this verse as proof of why they are baptizing babies by saying, oh, obviously in Christmas's house there might have been babies that were also baptized. No, no, no. The ones of his house that believed were baptized and the Corinthians that believed were baptized. So you can only be baptized after having believed of what Jesus did for you. In John 3 verse 5, we read that Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he's speaking to Nicodemus, except a man be born of water, and that refers to the water baptism, and of the Spirit, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We see here, the one baptism is a physical baptism, it is a baptism with water, and the second one is the spiritual baptism, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So people say, do you know, no, hang on now. Uh, you know, that water there refer refers to the, the water in the womb of the mother. No, there are many studies that have been done regarding this verse. John 3 verse 5 says, if you're not born of water, refers to baptism. To be baptized, baptizo, to be made fully wet as an adult believer. And if you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, then you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And I also have a YouTube video that you can watch on kingdom equals authority. So, and I also discussed this on the other video that I have on Jesus' second coming, that one of the conditions to be ready for the rapture, because I do believe in the rapture of the saints prior to the seven years of tribulation. And I believe that one of the conditions to be ready is I must be baptized in water and I must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So this is the verse confirming that if you are not baptized, if you are not born of water and of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. This is one thing we must realize, that if I am born of water, to be baptized in water as an adult takes a few seconds. It is not a very big thing, but the importance of it lies in what happens in the spiritual dimension. The enemy knows, Satan knows what the power is of being baptized. Because I died to my old man. I laid the old man down in the water and I stand up in a new life of authority with Jesus Christ. And that is why Satan does everything in his power to stop us from taking that step 
of being baptized in water, of burying my old man in the water, standing up in a new life in Christ. Because he knows when I do that, I stand up in a new authority and I start to speak the word of God according to the way that Jesus did it. And Satan does not want us to, to understand that. He does not want us to know what the power is of being baptized in water and then also to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. At number five, now let us have a look. At what is the true origin of infant baptism? And my brother and my sister, you can do your own research about this. I might be shocking you today. That is okay. I also had to receive the shock so that I could do the right thing according to the word of God. And I started to do my own research about these things. And then I found out the truth of the word of God. So you can also go and do your own research regarding the origin of infant baptism. I'm only giving you some information regarding the true origins thereof. History of infant baptism. Infant baptism appeared in the Christian church history around the 2nd century, coming from the pagan influences of Baal worship. It came about as a result of the doctrine of baptismal regeneration. That's the big problem. The doctrine of baptismal regeneration. That is the teaching that baptism is essential to salvation. Or if you want to turn it around, that water baptism saves the soul. Or at least is a part of a person's salvation. And that is not true, my brother and my sister. Your water baptism does not save your soul. It is part of your step of obedience to Christ. And it also helps you die to the old man and stand up in new authority against the wiles of the devil. Consequently, as the teaching of baptismal regeneration started being propagated, that is in the second century, it was natural for those holding to this doctrine to believe that everyone should be baptized as soon as possible. These two grievous errors, baptismal regeneration and infant baptism, have probably caused more people to go to hell than any other doctrine. How can this author say this? Because many people believed that because they were baptized as babies, they got saved. While it was not true. Where did infant baptism come from? One has to go back to Genesis 10 and 11 where we read of Noah's great-grandson Nimrod who had a wife, Semiramis, who started the great pagan Babylon mystery religion around the time of the Tower of Babel. This pagan religion was later known as Baal worship in the Old Testament, simply another name for Nimrod. The book Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop gives us a little background on this Babylon mystery religion of Baal worship started by Nimrod and Semiramis. In this mysterious Babylonian religious system, Nimrod and Semiramis, along with their priests, were the only ones who understood the great mysteries of God. And since it was the only true religion, all others were false, according to them, obviously. Therefore, only the Babylonian priests could forgive and absolve sins and administer salvation. Now look at what they believed in the old Babylonian religious system and just compare it to what is believed in the Roman Catholic Church today. I also have a YouTube video on Roman Catholicism versus the Bible that you can watch for yourself if you want more information. Salvation could be achieved through various sacraments performed during the person's lifetime. This was in the Babylonian religious system. These sacraments were so-called channels of grace whereby salvation could be achieved. These sacraments necessary to salvation began at birth with infant baptism. That's where it comes from, from the Babylonian religious system. Other sacraments throughout life, ending with a final anointing with oil at death, to prepare one for the year after. None of these, my brother and sister, are found in the Bible. Yet, you will find them all in the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church today. Now, since the Babylonian priest was the only one who could administer these sacraments, 
The person was bound to the Babylonian system helplessly for life. The first essential sacrament Semiramis taught was baptism by water. The fact that such baptism was practiced 2,000 years before it was even mentioned and practiced in Christianity is an established fact and it can be traced right back to Babylon and Semiramis herself. You can do your own research regarding this and you will also find this. The ancient historian Bryant traces this pagan baptism back to the practice of commemorating Noah and his three sons' deliverance through the waters of the flood, emerging from the ark and entering a new life. Remember, this was started by Nimrod, the great-grandson of Noah. So he thought they were doing the right thing. They were do, worshipping the right God, but they were not. To commemorate this event, the priests of Nimrod would baptize newborn infants the fathers chose to keep, and they would become born again and become members of the Babylonian mystery religion. And this is what many people also believe in traditional churches to this very day. They believe that if their babies are baptized, but they are actually not baptized, then they are born again and become members of that specific church. It is not true. If the child was decided to be kept, the daddy would take it down to the pagan priest and the ceremony would be arranged. The priest first must exorcise evil spirits from the infant. My brother and my sister, a child does not have evil spirits that needs to be exorcised. But they did this by anointing the baby's head with oil. With the oil, the priest puts the occult mark of Tammuz on the child's head by marking a T with the oil on the head. This was later to become the sign of the cross, which is used in the Roman Catholic Church. The priest then put salt and spittle on the baby's tongue to preserve it from future influence of evil spirits. Holy water is now sprinkled or poured over the baby's head and the baby is said to be cleansed from any original sin and is now born again and a member of the Babylonian religion. This process was known as infant christening and was practiced hundreds of years before Christ and is found nowhere in the Bible. Knowing what you do now, would you want your baby christened? This was called Baal worship in the Old Testament and God called it an abomination. At around the 3rd century, traces of the Babylon mystery religion, now known as Baal worship, infiltrates the Christian church. And look at the red part now. Immediately, Bible-believing Christians reject the idea of baptizing babies and baptismal regeneration, the teaching that baptism is essential to salvation, or if you want to turn it around, that water baptism saves the soul. So the Bible-believing Christians rejected this idea. These Bible-believing Christians were labeled slanderously as Anabaptists, because they rejected this idea of baptizing babies as pagan and not scriptural. They would re-baptize these infants when they got older and trusted Christ as their own savior. Thus the term Anabaptists, which meant re-baptizers. These Anabaptists were persecuted greatly because of this issue. When Emperor Constantine made Christianity the official state religion of Rome, one of the first laws passed was the law decreeing infant baptism as the law of the land in 416 AD. When they passed that law in 416, every baby in the Roman Empire had to be baptized at the hands of an authorized Roman priest or else. Those who disagreed with this teaching and rejected it were soon slanderously called Anabaptists and they were persecuted without mercy for not conforming. Historian J.M. Carroll declares, For 30 miles on the road leading out of Rome were stakes with gory heads of Anabaptists. They were beheaded. They were killed because they refused to baptize their babies. Because they said it is not biblical. So they were killed for standing up against this lie, this deception that was being brought in by Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church. Occasionally, 
someone will say, don't you think infant baptism is beautiful to look at? A. A. Davis replies, if you knew the history of that doctrine, where it came from and the bloodshed that it brought into the world, you would never watch another such service in your lifetime. This is from the Baptist story. He quotes historian J.M. Carroll from his Trail of Blood. No other doctrine that ever found its way into Christendom has caused so much bloodshed in this world as the doctrine of infant baptism. The priests of Rome taught, and they still do in the Roman Catholic Church today, that it is not possible even for newly born infants to be saved so as to enjoy the delights of heaven unless they are baptized. And this is even believed in the traditional churches in South Africa as well. The Council of Trent of the Roman Catholic Church between 1545 to 1563, their catechism states in black and white the following. Infants, unless regenerated unto God through the grace of baptism, whether their parents be Christian or infidel, are born to eternal misery and perdition. So they say, if a child is not baptized as soon as possible, if he dies, he will go straight to hell, they say. But what a horrible doctrine that was. And what a contrast with the doctrinal beliefs of the Anabaptists who believed that all those dying in infancy, whether baptized or unbaptized, are saved. That is the truth of the word, my brother and my sister. If a baby dies, whether baptized or unbaptized, they are saved. Where do we find this? We find this in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, where God says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So there God says, I sanctified the baby before it came out of the womb. So when it came out of the womb, it came out as sanctified. Sanctified by God. Not full of original sin, but sanctified by God. And so many people say, no, no, hang on, but in the context that only refers to Jeremiah. No, no, my brother and sister, you must understand one thing very clearly. Yes, God speaks to Jeremiah there, but God knows every child being formed in the belly of his mother. And he knows them before they come forth out of the womb. And, and God sanctifies every child before they come forth out of the womb. So every child comes out of that womb being sanctified by God and being ordained as a prophet unto the nations, because every one of us is supposed to go and teach all nations, remember, make disciples of all nations. And we also read in Matthew 19 verse 14, that Jesus said, suffer, that means allow little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So again we see, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is for the little children. So Jesus will not say, you know, I sanctified that baby before it came out of the mother's womb. But the moment it dies after being born and it's not baptized, it's going straight to hell. No, you are listening to a lie, my brother and my sister. This is the truth of the Bible. The Bible says God sanctified that baby and he says, let the little children come unto me. Many, of course, will ask, what does the above have to do with us today? A lot. You see, the union of church and state continues today in most countries of the world. In these state churches, pastors and leaders christen babies, which means they make them Christians by baptizing them. Thus, the adult person that has been christened as a baby believes he is on his way to heaven simply because he was christened or baptized in infancy, having been taught all his life that this saved him, he naturally considers himself saved by the act of infant baptism. That is wrong. How do we get saved? I also have a whole YouTube video that you can go watch on how do I give my life to Jesus Christ. You are not saved by being baptized as a baby, my brother and my sister. You only become saved by doing the following things, as we read in John 1 verse 12 and 13. That says, But as many as received Him, 
to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So the first thing is we must receive the Lord Jesus. Then we receive the power to become children of God, the sons of God. And then Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. A baby cannot believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. A baby cannot make confession unto salvation. Only an adult believer can do that. And if you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, at the end of this video will be a prayer that you can pray. If you've been pricked in your heart today with this message and you understand you thought you were saved because you were baptized as a baby and you suddenly understand also that you are actually not saved because you've not done these things, then you must do these things. Pray this prayer with all the earnestness from your heart before God and He will save you. And then you can know that you are saved. Now, infant baptism is one of the most critical doctrines of the Catholic Church. We read in their catechisms, The sheer gratuitousness of the grace of salvation is particularly manifest in infant baptism. The church and the parents would deny a child the priceless grace of becoming a child of God were they not to confer baptism shortly after birth. And because of this deceptive teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, Many thousands of people felt so guilty when their children died without being baptized and they were told by the church, your children all went to hell. That is a lie, my brother and my sister. So you don't have to feel guilty anymore because you might not have baptized your baby as an infant before it died. That is a lie that was told to you by the devil. The catechism tells us where this cornerstone doctrine originated. The practice of infant baptism is an immemorial tradition of the church. There is explicit testimony to this practice from the second century on. This is from their own catechisms. That the practice of infant baptism is an, is an immemorial tradition of the church. And where did the Roman Catholic Church get these traditions? From the Babylonian mystery religion of Nimrod, Semiramis and Tammuz. Whereas we read again, I'm repeating the verse that Jesus used in Mark 7, verse 6 to 13. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered. So if you are rejecting the commandment of God to be baptized as an adult believer, then you are making the word of God of none effect through your church tradition. And that's why I also said at the beginning in Isaiah 4 verse 6, where God says, because you have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. It is time to stand up for the truth of the word. And just to explain something else to you, we are sprinkled with water when we are babies. That word sprinkle is only found three times in the New Testament Greek. And it's actually the word rantizo. Interesting. Baptize is baptizo. Sprinkle is rantizo in Greek. And look what it means. From a derivative of rhino, to sprinkle, to render besprinkled. That is, asperse, ceremonially or figuratively, sprinkle. And it's got nothing to do with the baptism, my brother and my sister. That word sprinkle is found only three times in the New Testament. And those are the verses that I'm showing you there now. Hebrews 9 verse 19 and 21. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people with that blood and water. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. That water and blood there that they, they sprinkled the people with refer to the blood of Jesus and the blood and the water that will come out of the side of Jesus. It's got nothing to do with the baptism. And then in Hebrews 10 verse 22, the interesting verse, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. If my heart is true 
and I am in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So, here we see again, the word sprinkled, used three times in the New Testament, not even once referring to baptism, but if I have a true heart in full assurance of faith, what is the first thing that will happen? My heart will be sprinkled from an evil conscience and my body will be washed with pure water. Where do I find that pure water? When I'm baptized in the water and I stand up and I start to study the word of God, I'm also washed by the water of the word, the Bible tells me. And I just want to end this part here to ask the question, how can you call someone a re-baptizer if he or she was never baptized in the first place. So many people come to me, they say to me, Tell you know what, I was disinherited because I refused to baptize my baby. And I say to them, it's nothing, nothing strange. And then they say to me, but you know, my reverend said, I'm throwing grace back into the eyes of God if I want to have myself be re-baptized after I was baptized as a baby. But that's the whole point. As a baby, you were never baptized. I think I've explained this very clearly now. To have a few drops of water sprinkled on your forehead does not mean you are baptized. You are not made fully wet. Then people say, no, but Tian, you know what? In the Greek Orthodox Church, they take babies and then sometimes they really make them fully wet. Sure, but we've seen the verses in the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized, that you must believe, that you must repent and be baptized. That baby has got nothing to repent of. That baby cannot yet believe. So even though that little baby might have been dunked into the water totally, as I've seen in some little videos that people showed me as well, that does not mean that it is baptized. Because baptism is linked to a few other things as well. To understand that it is a burial. That I die to the old man. I bury my old man. I repent of my sins. And then I receive the washing away of my sins by being baptized. The baby does not have any sins that need to be washed away. So I ask you, my brother and my sister, have you been baptized yet? Because if not, it is time to become obedient to the word of God. And especially in these end times we are living in, if you want to be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus and looking at what's happening around the world now, I tell you, the coming of our King is very, very, very close at hand. It is imminent, the Bible says. So we know that He's coming. But one of the conditions is that you must also be baptized and baptized with the Holy Spirit. To be baptized with the Holy Spirit is you ask the Lord Jesus to baptize you with His Holy Spirit. But the water baptism is you need to be baptized. And usually you can be baptized by another Bible-believing baptized disciple of Jesus. But there are also testimonies of people growing up in Muslim communities and wherever that did not have other Christians that could baptize them. So in a specific instance, a lady asked the Lord, but Lord, can I baptize myself? And then he said to her, I am with you. Go under that water. Die to your old man and stand up in a new life in Christ. So there are specific instances. God is not phased by your circumstances, my brother and my sister. But the thing is, are you willing to become obedient to the word of God? Are you willing to start to do what the Bible says? Are you still listening to your priests? Are you still listening to your reverend and your minister saying these things to you and making you feel guilty because, you know, you're going to uh, throw back the grace of God into the face of your parents because they baptized you as babies, as a baby, and now you want to throw back the grace into their faces and now you feel so guilty. You must understand one thing. Guilt never comes from the Holy Spirit. Guilt is the devil. The devil tries to stop you from becoming obedient to the word of God. And after having listened to this message, you must decide what you're going to do. At number six, let us now end with, did Jesus practice what he preached? We read in John 3, verse 22 and 23, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. So here we see that Jesus himself practices what he preached. He said, go and teach all nations 
and baptize them. So he was teaching the nations and he was baptizing them. He was practicing what he preached. And John was also baptizing people at a place where there was much water. Because I've also heard Christians saying, but you know, in the desert there's not much water, so that's why they just sprinkled water on their foreheads. No, no, no. John baptized people at a place where there was much water. And they came and they were baptized. They were made fully wet. We proceed to read in John 4, verse 1 and 2. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And immediately people say, but hang on, you just read now in John 3 that Jesus baptized. Now this verse says, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, of course. Jesus baptized first his own disciples, and then thereafter they started baptizing the people. The same happens with me and everybody else around us. You baptize a few people and then those people start to baptize other people. So Jesus himself made disciples and he baptized the disciples. And then he teaches us, go and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then people say to me, but Tian, I'm so afraid that I will lose my friends. I will lose my family if I, if I do baptize myself. And I say to them, you must know it is going to happen. But you must make the following decision in Galatians 1 verse 10. We read, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So even regarding the baptism, the believers' baptism, you must ask yourself the question, do you want to please men or do you want to please God? For if you please men, you will not be the servant of Christ. I would rather please God because eternity waits and I'm going to be with God in all eternity. But I have to make a decision. Do I want to please God by also becoming obedient to his instructions regarding baptism? And just again, just to make a link for you regarding why I say baptism is one of the conditions to be ready for the rapture. I actually discussed this in much more detail in my book on the rapture. And if you send me an email, I can send you a PDF version thereof. Or you can go on ebooks and you will find my free ebook on the rapture of the saints that you can read. But these are the verses that confirmed it in my heart. And the first verse is Matthew 22 verse 10 to 13. This is the parable that Jesus gave of the king that was going to have a wedding feast for his son. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So many people think that verse refers to heaven and hell. Now this refers to the time of the tribulation. You cannot go into the wedding feast of the Lamb if you're not wearing your wedding garment. Now what is that wedding garment? And we see that it is linked to the baptism. If we read Galatians 3 verse 26 and 27. that says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Please read this verse just as it says there. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And remember, if I'm baptized into Christ, I'm baptized into his burial, into his death. So I stand up in a new life with Christ. So I have now Put on Christ. And that word put on in the Greek is in duo. It means in the sense of sinking into a garment. In the sense of sinking into. Like sinking into the water. If you are baptized, you are sinking into the water. You are immersed in the water. And that is why you can know you are now put on Christ. Because then you stand up in a new life in Christ. And then we see Jesus rejoicing in Luke 10 verse 21 where it is written, 
In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. That word prudent also means the clever or the learned. And has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. My brother and sister, are you still trying to be a clever and a learned man? Are you trying to be so clever regarding the word of God that you are rejecting the counsel of God by not being baptized according to the word? Are you still clinging to the deceptive teaching of the Babylonian mysteries? Are you still clinging to the deceptive teachings of the Roman Catholic Church? And are you willing to stand before the throne of God one day with that deception hanging over your head? Because you must become like a baby. Because God has revealed these things unto babes. And he says many times we must become like little children and start to do what the Bible says. And if you do understand what I explained today, and if the Holy Spirit has really pricked you in your heart, I want to end with this verse in Acts 22 verse 16. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You have a free will decision to make. You have heard what the Bible says regarding the believers' baptism. You've read the verses for yourself. You've seen the verses that I showed you on the screen. And you've now also read where infant baptism comes from. And you've also seen now that infant baptism is not a baptism. So the question is, what are you going to do with this new knowledge? Because after today, after having watched this video of mine, you will never stand before the throne of God and say, Lord, I did not know about this. I did not know what I should do. It is time for you to make a decision. And it's also time to get into a personal relationship with the living God. Because Jesus is not dead. Religion is dead. Relationship with Jesus Christ is life. And that is why we read in Revelation 1, verse 17 and 18, that Jesus says, I'm the first and the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold... I am alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you give us your instructions to become obedient to your word. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will prick the hearts that have listened to this message. People that thought they were saved because they were baptized or christened as babies. But in the meantime, they were never saved because they never received you or they never confessed you with their mouths or they never believed that you raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will convict them of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. And I pray that they will stand up now, that they will not tarry any further, but that they will arise and be baptized and wash away their sins while they call on the name of the Lord. And then I know, Lord, they can stand up from that water that they can know that they have buried the old man and that they will stand up in a new life in Christ. And I praise your mighty name. And Lord Jesus, we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen. And you